hide. Here I come. You can't hide. I'm gonna find you and take it slowly. Ready or not, here I come. You can't hide. I'm gonna find you and take it slowly. Yo, I am here to bring you music. I know your ears are not used to it. The last few years you have been bamboozled by these slackers in the glass. I think for an event like this, you really want the kids to think about variety. Um, really think about because right now they're all in the angst and oh, and, and they're really going to their dark place. Um, but you really want them to think about what is the event about? Um, what are they trying to say? What do they want to get across? Um, how do they work as an ensemble? So if one person has a dark poem, how do I come after that and give a different tone, a different beat, a different color to it? I'm so. Freaking green. <laughs> I'm so green. They all do poetry readings as myself, so you know it's like a poet comes out, reads, claps, get off. And this is going to be much more theatrical. It goes from one poet to the next poet to the next poet. So getting them to have that sense of fluidity with the piece. When it gets cold outside, you got nobody to love. Understand what I mean when I said ain't no way we're gonna give up. Like a little girl cries in a bed, the monsters they live in her dreams. Is there anyone out there? It's getting harder and harder to breathe. Um, again, how do they complement each other in opposed to standing alone? How does a whole, all their voices combine together for one voice? So that's the big thing. Oh, right. Uh, my name is Joshua Brandon Bennett. I hail from Yonkers, New York. And uh, my journey here, I got a phone call from Camila Forbes, and uh, she said she had this gig with uh, The Roots. I've been a Roots fan <laughs> since I was about 12, 13 years old. Uh, Black Thought has been my favorite MC just for a while. Um, so Camilla told me she had a gig with the roots. I said, I'm super down. What's up? What do I need to do? She said, shoot me some poems about you know social justice, activism, etc. So uh, the two poems that jumped to my mind immediately were 10 things I want to say to a black woman. 10 things I want to say to a black woman. One, I wish I could put your voice in a jar. Wait for those lonely winter nights when I forget what God sounds like. Run to the nearest maximum security prison and open it. Watch the notes bounce off the walls like ricochet bullets, etching keyholes into the sternums of every brother in the room, skeletons opening rose blossom beautiful to remind you that the way to a black man's heart is not with his stomach. It is through the heaven in your hello. Okay, I am Chitraleka Diyar. If you look at my passport, it'll have my full name, Chitraleka Dharmaraj Ramanohar. I am from okay. India, South India, Tamil Nadu, Chennai. Uh, two or three weeks back, I get a call from the US consulate saying that Brave New Voices of America is happening, would you be interested? And then I'm like, yes, definitely, why wouldn't I be interested? I never really took myself seriously as a poet, I never really thought of myself as a poet. And uh, I've never been on stage before in my entire life, and uh, I'm terrified of stages, but this was just something like, as soon as I heard about it, I was like, yeah, that's something I need to do. The scene plays in my head over and over again in an infinite loop as I try to understand what it feels like to hold a child. The air keen in her lungs, cold and throbbing, lightning darting out of her eyes like flashes of the future. Heart thundering. Now all I want to do is to sing her a song, a song of magic and laughter and a perfect world where she can be anything she wants to be. Dream chaser, cloud surfer, queen of the stars. So I'm George Watsky. I'm from San Francisco, California originally, now living in Los Angeles. Just graduated from college. I came into poetry when I was 16 years old and I've been doing poetry ever since. Did competitions, 
eventually caught the eye of um, Deaf Poetry Jam. If you look at the distribution of a spoken word show demographically, I generally stick out like a sore, sore thumb. And when I get on stage, a lot of times people but will say to me, oh, I didn't think that I was going to like bird. you. But I decided I midway through that I liked you, and usually if they have that reaction, it's because they realize that I'm trying to be honest about what I'm talking parakeets. about. I'm so green. I got a green fist that I hold up at green rallies for the green well-off. Actually, I've got a whole green arm that got gangrene and fell off. I'm so green. I moved to Greenland just so I could move back to America and work on my green card. I am so green. Um, my name is Jamaica Osorio. I am from Honolulu, Hawaii, and um, right now I'm going to school in California at Stanford University. Camilla emailed my mom uh, a few weeks ago because she didn't have my email address um, and told my mom that she wanted me to be involved in some kind of performance at the Kennedy Center. Um, and then my mom emailed me and I got all excited. Um, so it was kind of just this roundabout way of getting involved, but I'm really, really excited to be here. The penthouse suite, so all the men and women who finance the Earth's deterioration play the role of its savior, sipping martinis in hybrid glass bottom boats, tallying the brown bodies that float by. This society's soil is sinking in quicksand. Our hands above our heads, trying to form prayers for relief funds, hoping the government might soon start funneling money back into education for the next generation, if there is one. Poetry has kind of become my medium of expression, and I got into spoken word, and it just started to take off. Um, for me as an artist and as a person, it started to really help me develop more than my music was helping me develop um, into, into the kind of person and artist I wanted to be. So I just kind of took off with it and I haven't looked back since. yourself and uh, not only get away with it but inspire other people to do that as well. That's my dream. My dream. I have so many. The dream for me that I've had since as long as I can remember is um, to represent my Native American people very well and to do that through dance, through spoken word. Uh, a lot. <laughs> I want to make this a full-time thing, like I want to go around the world doing this, like just like a truth. The dream is probably for people to, is for people to be able to exist in their natural selves and without having the pressures of, of influencing the outside, you know, outside things. I guess that's the dream, just like the ways we perceive freedom. You know, it's being able to be yourself without any consequences. And, and having yourself not, that self that you perceive not influenced by, you know, outside things and not having to question whether that self is influenced. Um, I don't know. I'm so sorry. Uh, it's interesting. I guess my dream is to be a mix that's never existed before of educator, scholar, and an entertainer. You know, um, ever since I was young, I've always looked for a space in which all of my gifts could kind of collide and I could both be myself and be professional and be performative and have people enjoy it, but still learn something. Because it was just never cool to be a teacher when I was younger. We hated teachers. They sucked. You know, we didn't see ourselves in the stories we read. And uh, until I found spoken word and, and found hip hop theater, I didn't realize that there were, there were places like the stage, there were places like the Kennedy Center where folks with all different types of stories and dreams could come together and, uh, and project, I guess, one singular voice in different shades. So I guess that's, that's part of what my dream is, uh, to be someone who carries that through for his entire life, that creates spaces like this, where uh, folks with a bunch of different stories can get together and uh, let our echo be heard. I think it's hard to say like what my dream is, because I feel like in a lot of ways we're like living in a dream right now as a country, and um, it's hard to figure out whether we're awake or asleep. My dream, always growing up was just to get my parents in a better place and to get them out of the environment that we were in. 
We grew up, I grew up uh, on the south side of Chicago, and at that time, uh, Chicago Public School student violence was, death toll violence was at a rise. And uh, I just knew I had to keep going to school, and I knew I needed to keep succeeding in order to accomplish my dream of getting them out of there, and you know, getting myself out as well, and just getting to a better environment, a better place. So that's why I'm still working on. I'm still working on that dream right now. Hey, Ma. It's good to hear your voice. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I got food. No, nothing's wrong. It's just that going to college, I'm realizing I'm different, different. They see another person when they look into my eyes, close their shoulders real tight, hold their heads up high like they're better, like they're scared, like they just don't understand, I don't either. But I don't judge you till you judge me. Got kids looking at me like why I can't eat at McDonald's. Cause five dollars gotta last me another ten to Mars. They see the look in my eyes and they can tell that I'm bothered. Leave the black kid alone for return on all of us. Wondering why my daddy's struggling at the county hospital sitting while they got the common cold and they getting more attention. Spit it how I live it, spit it how I feel it. At the county waiting, at the county waiting. Come to class stressed, they like, why don't your daddy just use his benefits? Not a kid in the world, I let it go because of ignorance. Step in social class late, cause I had to work a double time. Step up in the door, I see the just like a nigga eyes, you just like a nigga, you. You dressing like a nigga too. Look, don't sit next to me, look, so I sit next to you, book. Wide open and you think I'm gonna copy. I get a better grade, you studied all night, sorry. I hear doors lock when I step up in the parking lot. They looking at me crazy when I see the type of car I got. Cops pull me over like, um, whose car is this? Oh, don't worry, it's the point zero zero one percent. Police chief guest speaker say I'm giving off the wrong images, but I am embracing my do rags and my Timberlands. I am embracing my do rags and my Timberlands. Mama, can you tell me why they looking at me different? Can you please tell your son why they looking at me different? Financial aid, like you owe three thousand dollars, credit or debit. Um, how about um layaway? So now I'm. Um, now I'm sitting at the edge of my chair trying to bargain. You can have this. I'ma pass this class without chapter six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven, eleven. Why this girl in my social class say poor people are just lazy? They are what they are because they just don't want to make it. They are what they are because they just don't want to make it. What the hell does she know? She just a little rich girl, rich girl. She don't know how it is to be piss po, piss po. This guy in my class said we should cancel affirmative action. It's making a white man look bad because he's at a disadvantage. How can he manage? I told him maybe he was just so far ahead and we catching up a bit and he's scared of equality so he's shaking in his shh. <laughs> my sociology teacher told me I think good sociologically. I told her I think urban economically. <laughs> white people scared because I heard him say a black joke. White people scared cause I heard him say a black joke. Oh my God, I think I'm here to say the black joke. Hey, shut up, maybe you hear us say the black joke, black joke. <laughs> Stayed in election night because I had to. KKK ran through. Hit the brown underneath the covers cause I had to. 
Mama, can you help me? Please, can you answer me? Remember five years old when I asked you what a mutt was? They calling me black kid. They saying I'm Mexican. Let my beard grow. Now they saying that I'm Arab. Now it's weird jokes like bombs over Baghdad. Yes, I'm an outcast. Not because I want to be. Mama, can you tell me why they looking at me different? Mama, can you tell me why they looking at me different? Is it because I am embracing my do-rags and my Timberlands? I am embracing my do-rags and my Timberlands. They see another person. And when they look into my eyes, cause they shoulders real tight Hold their heads up high like they're better Like they're scared Like they just don't understand, I don't either But anyway, Mom How was your day? She said I was starfish and coffee maple syrup and jelly, butterscotch clouds, a tangerine, and a side order of ham in a lunchbox. You set your mind on free baby. Maybe you will understand. I told you I'm as free as a crippling dove with a mouthful of ivy that there's freedom in my flight. I bet you got a box full of eyelashes on your way into the room with a lotion slice. I bet you smell like cocoa. And you didn't know that penguins can fly only in a sky of ocean and clouds full of foam. But I bet you got a broken heart. And it's wrapped in a billion white flags. And I can see your promises shattered in a thousand shredded tomorrows before you ever keep mine folding like a paper boat and hope that we won't sink. I've been trying to strip boulders across a frozen lake. Won't you break him and make a flute out of my bones? Cause I've got a handful of sticks that they have thrown. When I told them that broken words don't hurt. But I can feel them. Are you brave enough to put an oath into your wrist and let them kiss and not stop the bleeding? Go ahead and throw me back into the lake like small fish. Do you ever think of God's lips and how they kiss, baby, and tears away? Love me forsaken, finger paint me childhood, honeysuckle me dry, and bend me straight. If I wasn't wallpaper or paint, just drywall, would you still think I was beautiful? I want you to know that I'm a ship in a dock with no sails, with a brass anchor for a heart. Would you mind if we stayed here for a while? I've got a metronome for a heartbeat, and I need a best friend to care. I've been staring at the sky since my dreams took off. Won't you hold me like a kite runner until the string runs out, lights out? Won't you listen to my voice that glows in the dark every time the notes hit the wall? Won't you build me up cathedral? Carve me Amish furniture, a table where a family eats bread and milk. Won't you let me be that meaningful? I want you to know that I use words in a way that prisons use light to make rainbows. Thank you for the pen to the paper. She said I was starfish and coffee. I've always been a print song, and sometimes I cry purple rain. Won't you climb into my homemade tent in the living room? I've got plenty of maple syrup and jelly. You are my Apollo. You are my flesh pot. Forgive me for turning into a tree. Gerald Stern. Fourth grade. I fell on the wood chips. My shirt flew up, and everyone saw the mailbox in the center of my abdomen. They laughed. Judith shouted, gross, a May has a big green ruler in the middle of her chest. I pulled my shirt down. The mailbox is dark olive. It sits just above the navel and accommodates packages up to a foot and a half. Pickup comes on Sundays. In gym class, Sasha shouted, I can't sit next to Android Amay. I did not insist that I was not an android. I worried that I was. I went home and sat in the bathtub so that a fine spackle of rust collected on my mailbox's rim, and I had to sand it off. 
The mailbox grew as I aged. It made me ponderous. In fifth grade, the girls played games like slap the stomach. Your hand had to make a flat skin sound, not a metallic boom. I always lost. I got mean and sliced the bottom off my yearbook photo where a square frame glinted through my yellow shirt. All I thought was, mailbox, mailbox, it grew. I read books on minerals and lay on my bedroom floor, arching my back. I battered the metal until it sang. I wrote stories in which the love interest slowly removed his shirt. This was what I dreamed about. He did not have any receptacles in his chest except the usual ones. The heroine observed him forgivingly. He was relentless. I became a gnawing and repetitive author. One time the hero fell into a fountain and had to peel off his shirt. He was so ashamed. How utterly normal, I thought, one hand squeaking open my aperture. In ninth grade, I went out for cross country. My hair was down to my ass and twitched. My t-shirt was thick and black. I wore a neck brace. If this were a before story, I would laugh. This is not a before story. I pissed myself on the second run and careened with sunspots in my eyes into the sea hall bathroom. It was unlit. I crashed backwards into the toilet. The others ran like Fred Astaire. My bones were too weak for the clanging box I carried. Packages tumbled in my gut. A porcelain clock smashed within my chest. In 11th grade, I briefly dated a young obsessive compulsive who, unlike everyone, refused to hold credence in the ugly slap. He had some affinity for the machine in me. Once he placed a whole hand inside, enough to glissade over glossy slips and stamps. He admired the way a t-shirt could catch in the hinge. I had short hair then, I do now. I am built like a bobsledder or a bobsled. How ashamed I've been made to feel of this metal door in me in the middle of a great despair. All I did was read Vogue, the shape issue. A woman who was soft and got hard. I'm hard too, with a shutter like a window or a camera. Architecture is a people's proof that they existed. A lingering footprint after leaving, an echoing note long after silence. This is our silence. Our minerals, the outstretched towers of our mosque are the birthplace of our echo. Geneva, where accords ended genocide, birthplace of Homeland of tolerance. Where's your neutrality? When all we ask is for some small grain of history to throw our voices from. The minaret of a mosque is the building's highest point from which the call for prayer is released. We are building temples here, not terrorism. But the Swiss Constitution has forbidden us from. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. If minarets can be outlawed, what of masters? What of Muslims? What of Islam? Are we such enemies that we can make even Switzerland go to war? The vaults have spoken, and our towers have as little right to peace as bayonets. And now our mosques, towels in suspicion, domed in misconception, have been called military, military barracks. barracks. But it is only a war when both sides are fighting. Otherwise, it is the self same genocide accords were set against in Geneva. Birthplace of peace, homeland of tolerance. Are we not human enough to merit a basic human right? Freedom of worship. This, this is a religion. religion. There is no room for anyone's politics here, a place of worship, not weapons. When extremes go to war, we the people are caught in the middle, standing alone in the middle of our mob, calling for prayer to muffle the venom of, go back where you came from, all stemming from the bitter fear of Islamicization. We are not colonialists, but these allied nations have mistaken the pillars of our minarets for the flagpoles of their imperialism. Do not project your nagging conscience onto our sanctuary. 
to hear echoes from our battle cries, we are peaceful people. And yet, still told that there, there is, is no place for us, or our towers, or our pillars, our prayers, our echoes, or, or any proof, proof that we ever were. This is a battle to wipe the pages of history clean of our existence. But what about this is not cultural purging, purging man-made extinction, architectural genocide? to the stage. Put your hands together, D.C., for George Watsky from San Francisco, California. George Watsky, y'all. Uh. Hey. I have another environmental poem for you. This one is about how hard it is to be a perfect consumer today and also about advertisers who use environmentalism to sell their products. I'm so green. <laughs> I'm so freaking green. I'm so green. I look in the mirror and I terrify myself. <laughs> I'm so green. My best friend Benny bought a bright green Bentley and I turned green with envy. The used car salesman tried to sell me a lemon. I held out for a lime. It gets a mile a gallon, but boy, does it shine when I go for a spin, so now I run red lights and stop at green lights just to soak it in. I am so green. <laughs> because I am what I eat. <laughs> Granted, I don't like green beans or leafy greens, but, but I love green eggs and ham and green beef and green cheese and green legs of lamb. I am so green. I don't just have a green thumb. I got a green ring finger probably because I bought my wife's engagement ring from a supermarket dispenser, but you know, I, I got green middle fingers and I flipped the green bird. I flipped green tropical birds. I flipped parakeets and all you non-green, white, yellow, black, peach, purple, and in between parakeets, I'm so green. I got a green fist that I hold up at green rallies for the green well off. Actually, I've got a whole green arm that got gangrene and fell off. I'm so green. <laughs> I moved to Greenland just so I could move back to America and work on my green card. I am so green. I am so green. I was chilling with my best friend Morpheus in the Matrix, as we often do. He offered me a red pill and a blue pill, and I chose the green one. I am so green. Me and Kermit the Frog have a two-person support group called It's Not Easy Being Us. I hate. I hate New England trees in the fall, ripe tomatoes, and Oprah Winfrey because she's giving too much credit to the color purple. <laughs> oh, I said it. <laughs> I hate accountability. I hate transparency because see-through is pretty much the opposite of green. But most of all, I hate having to explain how I got so green, how I'm going to stay so green, how the rest of the color wheel is a threat to our natural resources, the future of our planet, the exact benchmarks for carbon emissions that will reign in climate change, and looking at pictures of adorable polar bears clinging to ice cubes with annoying-ass Sarah McLaughlin songs playing in the background. <laughs> Damn, it's annoying. Our revolution is quickly becoming a catchphrase. You know, a color to paint the walls of our castles. Shell Corporation, the world's second largest private sector oil company, is now marketing itself as a leader in environmental products. You know, their new motto, we can pass as green, we'll just put green dye in the gasoline. This is a public service announcement to Shell and to every other corporate, government, or individual body using a good idea as a marketing tool to choke the folks who spoke it first. Do not bend with the breeze and then freeze the wind stiff. I would call you a chameleon if that lizard wasn't green to begin with. <laughs> you know, I don't deny my part. My cheeks are flush with the hue of hypocrisy. 
I forked enough miles into my mother's Volvo station wagon to make the most self-assured odometer look for Jenny Craig's listings. I flew to Australia to perform one three-minute poem about global warming. I get the irony. Green, you know, it's not a press board wall. It's not a tax shelter. It's not a magic umbrella. We can make green off the movement, but the bottom line does not fold crisp between Ben Franklin's eyes and fit into a wallet. The bottom line is riding in your car's safety seat. The bottom line's voice hasn't dropped yet, and soon the bottom line won't have anything to do with folded paper but fan herself and pray for mercy. Look me in the eye and tell me those irises are so green. This planet is so green, and I am so humbled, and I am so grateful, and I am so gonna keep it that way. Thank you. <laughs> I am everything to you. Mine's hysteria, not history. Panic, not perspective. Madness, not civilization. I am the multitude that contains fear, compact in a perpetually postponed hourglass. I'm time ticking, clocks both biological and workplace. The unhired help, the conditioned cunt, orifices at the other end, the cliched other that raises angels of the future with their backs already turned in womb. I am a piece of greed. I'm a piece of meat. Flambe in virgin kerosene or dressed down in a negligee, I'm neither here nor there. I am the wife who is now also the ramp. I am the allowed. I'm allowed love from man, not woman. Allowed love is myself. It's just an inner message in a bottle bobbing up and down some nameless sea. I make no difference, silent, sullen, or supine. I'm not raped in wedlock. In fact, I am the stand-upper for the privileges of penis, pride, pigsty. I'm the second-class citizen by birth and choice. In the first world state of a third world country, I'm the one who walks away from red and yellow smoke spears, my drapes splashed with seed, assertions, my guilt of womanhood. That great land of naked freaking goddesses. No happy pills, no anesthetic a woman bears, bears all, the cheapest on the grocery list, the feed all and end all, the earth that does not quake or spurt fire. And now, now, empathy, fat, woke, Bombay Party woke, new identity coordinator for the globalization. I am now the living room where your Hannah Montanas and your Barack Obama live out the great human American dream as if India's rules and tradition and conditioning wasn't enough, I scream. Princess replaced by a billion products. For hair, permissible or otherwise. <laughs> For sun, belligerent or otherwise. For lard, Edible or otherwise, for me, good enough or otherwise. You see, I'm the one who lost my virginity to a piece of red color on a stick. I don't get to see the red loss or the corn rose or the black and brown skin on my screen. I don't get to see the hope. So I am one of you. And right to be, would be, could be, must be, should be, love to be. I am no being, no certitudes. I am becoming no woman's land. I'm becoming you. Pity me the fool. That feels pitiful and tragic. I'm at 
acting like a bird off a National Geographic. Who pops its wings to show all of its colors? I'm trying to impress your ass, but you're on some other. See, baby, at this point, what should I do? I'm starting to question whether my feathers just ain't fly enough for you. And I don't mean to come off all the cocky, but for whatever reason, our beats just ain't locking. <laughs> See, baby, love blows, but if you follow your nose to can, work it out in the way that I believe you and I can. Oh, baby, you and me in the can, no pity of this wild little world. I'll sing you songs when we're all alone. If I was your girl, I said, birds in a feather, ooh, they flock together. And baby, that's you in love, and I want to be in that club. I say, jump me into your sweet sin. What I got to do? I'ma have to shed these arms and grow some wings just to be with you. I said, birds in a feather, they do flock together. And baby, that's you in love, and I want to be in that club. I say, jump me into your sweet sin. What I got to do? I'm going to have to shed these arms and grow some wings just to be with you. Habibi, Ibn, Zahi, Khadu Albi, I Zabusak, Marawah, the best. So he was my son. Detained, Guantanamo Bay, prisoner ID, 693, conviction, no charge, status, dead. So if a body is what you want, then here is flesh blood. Here is my son, 2006, June 10, found dead, hanging from his eight by seven foot cell suicide. Smell which nefso yenez, and I only wish I could give him a proper burial in the midst of rose beds. Cradle him beneath the dust and desert clay, nurture him into afterlife like oases, giving birth to bodies like January 12th, 1986, 10 centimeter dilations, two minute contractions, five hours of labor only so you could take him from me 15 years later, like March 22nd, 2002. Outside, I hear him scream. Mama, mama, Basarat Ali, open fire artillery. I run to him, searching for his voice and his face, searching for his body. It's been this way since they've come here, but wait. It's already too late, ya habibi. I try to stop the men cafe, ya sidi the ibni, but they feel nothing. A booth they glick, so I pull on my son's clothing, hoping that somehow I can push him back into my womb, preserving his body, but they shoot at his legs, shattering his knee, unable to move. He yells my name in vain, ya mama, and it's killing me to know that there is nothing I can do. He is not the terrorist religious extremist you are looking for. All of our men look the same with clay skin and stubborn hair, so you must be looking for another body, but to them, it didn't matter, and so he was detainee, Guantanamo Bay, prisoner ID, 693 conviction, still no charge status. Six years constrained, two days till dead. So if a body is what you want, then here is flesh and blood. I know you want to control yellow bodies the way you once did black bodies, but you have the wrong body. Take account, because I know, I know you saw the media images on Al Jazeera America. 
I know you saw their bodies naked. Stacked one on top of the other with leashes tied to their necks like dogs, but you probably thought nothing to yourself, but it doesn't matter. They're only bodies. And when they asked you, when they asked you for water to drink, you tied them down. Face up, head back, flushed water down their nose and throat so there's no breathing. Only forced drowning. And when they asked you for food, you induced forced feeding, pushing tubes into their stomachs until they puke. Blood and ensure milkshakes, but you were sure, you were sure no one would say anything about your mistakes because it's not torture, just your interrogation regime for the sake of security. My son was suspect 693, but you, America, are the real criminal. You have bought and sold people the way we buy from the butcher. You have a field of bloody land from sea to shining sea. Your earth drinks up the blood of people who never asked to meet you, who never asked to come, who never asked to be bothered. Your history <laughs> your history reeks of corpses. What have you to show for it? <laughs> what have you to show for it? You build malls and theme parks on your graveyard. And when you look back at your foundations, all you see is flesh and blood. My son. So if a body is what you want, then here it is. Take it. Had we been met where Enrica had your demo detained, Guantanamo Bay, prisoner ID, irrelevant, conviction, not applicable, status, forgotten, but it doesn't matter, does it? Because they are only bodies. Janahi Aberdeen, ladies and gentlemen. It's dawn, and the dust collects on my lips as I run. My dear hide moccasins drum desert valley bodies awake. Sun erupts on a canvas of morning glory blue and cactus flower purple. I see through the universal blackness to the house of the holy people, the in the ne'e, where prayers are stars and songs are planets. Worlds of ancestors shudder at the vibrations of my feet for sustenance. The holy people reach down and deliver me a gourd of medicine water. I ingest. The bitter taste evokes internal chords of sacred song. She Nasha. She Nasha. I run to this ancient song. I run in honor of Asaf Nadlehe, changing woman, because I am a changing girl. I run for my kinasta, my becoming of age ceremony. Age marks sit on my skin like scribbles in the sand and scream for me to find my woman name. So I may journey to the eastern tree of grandmothers. It's night in the hogan of my youth. My umbilical cord lies implanted in the earth at my feet. Grandfather fires hands search my face blindly between gray shadows of familiarity. Medicine man sings fortitude and childbearing songs 
for my beating body. Smoke from sacred mountain tobacco swells, transcends adobe walls and burns songs into wind that become the shadow of the moon, calling the ancestors a sahmagleru. Changing woman arrives first, and with her cupped hands filled with medicine water, she feeds me. My maturing body aches with motions of eruptions. In my womb, the embryonic seed of womanhood sprouts. In my breasts, the milky scriptures of Al-Soh Shemasane, all grandmothers flow. I reach to my family with medicine hands that push, then recede, push, then recede. My hands create waves throughout their bodies, massaging bad dreams into past scenes. My people weave their way into my womb, and the land shapeshifts into my breasts. One rotation and I enter the circle of womanhood. I look to the heavens for my name, and the ancestors speak. Eshchimba, woman who comes back from war. I am woman. Give it up, y'all, for Mr. Catalyst Alessandor from New Orleans, Louisiana. Give it up for Catalyst, y'all. still looking for magic. The older I get, the more I lose the blueprint the gods face, and sometimes I forget who I am and who I was, and I'm always trying. For some reason, the smell of crisp fabrics pressed into stacks by hands as wrinkled as maps always seems to bring me tumbling home. It makes me think about my grandmother. I don't know much about her. Our timelines didn't permit it as such, but I remember her smile. Could spin this world. If ever gravity decided to call in sick, I was told she was a real tall woman. Until diabetes made her a little bit shorter than me at age nine. Since the second grade, I've known what reality tastes like. It's the grandson cupping a kneecap like a baseball. It's the phantom stroke of two lost shins, and before she died, she told me, baby, sometimes I could still feel my toes. Told me to watch where the wind blows. Still to this day, I think about what she said, and I can, I can smell her on my shirts whenever I wash. And just yesterday, I had a discussion with God about the clouds. I asked her how they move. And strangely enough, she sounded a lot like my grandmother when she said, baby. The soul shift the clouds. I just wish them forward. It's a lot like love. I told God the last time I saw love, it told me to smile like we never met, and all I ever wanted was another hug, just another kiss to the forehead, someone to go back my broken childhood left scattered on a baseball field where love rarely showed up to in its days like this. God, did I wonder if your angels ever get carpal tunnel in their wings trying to stop poets like me from plunging their pen and tear their wrists to get more in tune with their words, and I know. Ever since the Old Testament, 
You got tired of speaking in tongues, so now you speak in sign language. I got angry with God and asked her, do you ever get arrogant? She smiles at me and says, boy, have you ever seen the sun? Whispers to me saying something like, you know, you're not alone. There's a grain of sand somewhere with your name on it. When she said that, all I could reply was, I hope you told that grain of sand the same thing about me. And God says, love. Love is like salt. No one knows the exact amount to use. And even though it dissolves, you can still taste it. And I pray to still taste it. After I left love, a thank you note at the bottom of my cigarette carton of still some nice. I wish love would just call me back. After she told me that magic don't exist, baby. But I can make you feel like it does. Like I can make the pain disperse like a pigeon's flock in the rain. Like we puncture holes in the skies, creating the outline of stars. Like I stay until morning without you ever asking. And if you listen closely, I'll teach you how to realign the crepit chalk from on the spine of dandelions. Let go of wasted breath and lost time. Because the more that you hold on to it, it hurts. And I ask God. How do you get rid of pain? God says, do as the clouds do. Cry and move forward. The scene plays in my head over and over again in an infinite loop as I try to understand what it feels like to hold a child. The air keen in her lungs, cold and throbbing, lightning darting out of her eyes like flashes of the future, heart thundering. Now all I want to do is to sing her a song, a song of magic and laughter and a perfect world where she can be anything she wants to be. Dream chaser, cloud surfer, queen of the stars. But the music dies in my throat, somewhere between intention and reality. Because you see, I was taught that a star is just a big ball of flaming gas far, far away, and it's really not that much fun to rule over a thermonuclear reaction. How do I tell her that? How do I tell her that in this world we have created for ourselves, parents sometimes have to bury their children, and children sometimes have their childhood stolen from them, and are given guns, metaphorical or otherwise, and are thought to kill their parents? How do I tell her that we have carved out her mountains, poisoned her rivers, separated generations of people? We are sorry, but we thought it was necessary. How? Do I tell her about the do-gooders who will rip apart her dreams when they're still soft and naked with just three words, not good enough? How do I sing her this new song about this new world when all I wanted to tell her is that every new dawn is a reason to dance? She looks like nothing more than a big pink soggy raisin in my arms, a mess of snot and hope. But when she smiles, the light just spills out of her eyes and almost drowns me, hands shaking. I cannot fight her strength because I am reminded again and again that she is a miracle. And the end of the world will just have to wait because she is smiling. I don't need a song of poverty and heartbreak, rainbows and stars. This is my song. Just come home. We are waiting to see you smile. Give it up one more time for Chitra and Shalini, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Okay, so this is a very different vibe of poem. All right. Even the greediest crack fiend will still pop lock for free if you put on the right song. 
We'll forget his addiction if for only a minute and reminisce about the taste of quarter water sipped through innocent 10-year-old lips on 1989 Brooklyn Brownstone steps. He will remind you that the music is in all of us. See, I was 12 years old the first time I heard Tupac. Headphones blaring stories of guns and glory unlike anything my suburban ears had ever heard. I was addicted, and the rhythm of the bass drum was my smack, so I'd smack my veins and inject verses till my arms were covered with all the latest tracks, snorting lines of Curtis Blow until all faded to black, and I woke to find a brand new Jay-Z album in my backpack. Couldn't backtrack or fall back like would've passed that, so I skipped time. Used Jake Dilla as my Deloitte and went past that, see. My daddy left, so I had to write. With my right and left, just to write the wrong seed left. Check, like kings in danger during chess. But I'm more like a queen, liable to move in all directions on any given beat. I get death, move swiftly on corners where young men act obtuse because they were never able to see life from the right angle. Some limited perspective renders their vision acute. Hearts colder than 45 degrees, never went to class. So they skip the first four letters of the alphabet and end lives with ease. Breathe. Remember that your heart is just a drum machine. And we are all hands in the same crowd, all waves on the same frequency. See, we are hip hop. I am hip hop. I am the first bullet that hits Sean Bell. I'm a crack pipe in a pregnant mother's hands, a project building on fire, a prison inmate writing the illest verse you ever heard from the gas chamber. I'm the handcuffs on his hands and the shackles on his mind. I'm four little girls, the Genesis Six and the Little Rock Nine. I'm three fifths human and five fifths warrior. I'm a king. No, I'm Rodney King. No, I'm Martin Luther King. Crip walking on clouds with Malcolm X. I'm Barack. Obama. Matter of fact, I'm Barack Obama's grandson trying to catch a cab in Manhattan. I'm a blood throwing up my hood, rolling deep ready to kill a nigga. I'm the Ku Klux Klan throwing up my hood, rolling deep ready to kill a nigga. A contradiction. See, hip hop is just like Halloween. A worldwide masquerade where rappers display acts of buffoonery not seen since masses days because we used to be free. We keep running back to bondage like backward slaves who gladly give up the rights to what we write in exchange for chains. And so it's no wonder that after all this time, the terms remained exactly the same because little black boys just want to play the game become super coons who hip hop from courts to courtrooms because rims, whether they are on cars or backboards, all sound exactly the same to them. So if you ask me what I love about this culture, I would say everything and nothing, that it has killed as many as it has saved, that it has moved, as many as it has paralyzed, and that somewhere in a back alley in the South Bronx, none of us will ever step foot in. There was a crack addicted man turntables in his eyes, a song in his heart, and a world that may never be ready to listen. And if you will, join me please in welcoming Jamaica Osario from Honolulu, Hawaii. Jamaica Osario, ladies and gentlemen. When it gets cold outside, you got nobody to love. Understand what I mean when I said, ain't no way we're gonna give up. Like a little girl cries in a bed, the monsters they live in her dreams. Is there anyone out there? It's getting harder and harder to breathe. February 27th, 2010. Two weeks ago, our traumatic earth ticked in the aftermath of God's anger. Haiti felt catastrophe shaking in the number seven. The death toll is 22,000 and counting today. Chile felt the same. Learning to find fear in 8.8. Two million people have been displaced. I'm sitting at my computer watching the number rise. It feels too much like Haiti. Katrina, Indonesia, it's been 50 years since Chile has been shaken like this one in 1960. 6,000 dead bodies fell through the cracks, 60 sunk in Hawaii. They call this global warming. The climate is correcting itself. I call it earth rattling, quaking, plate shifting, tsunami lifting. The sea is rising. And in my tiny Honolulu town, that means underwater homes, there is a wall of water taunting my homeland. I'm 2,000 miles away. The phone lines are hollow like open graves in Hawaii. Brown bodies are born asthmatic, choking from first inhale, running from an aquatic mountain. Is there anyone out there? It's no wonder we cannot breathe. 
This is reality. Global warming will break the foundation of a community without even shaking the penthouse suite, so while the men and women who finance the Earth's deterioration play the role of its savior, sipping martinis in hybrid glass-bottom boats, tallying the brown bodies that float by, this society's soil is sinking in quicksand. Our hands above our heads, trying to form prayers for relief funds, hoping the government might soon start funneling money back into education so the next generation, if there is one, will learn how to prevent this from ever happening again. It is as if the government thinks if we are uneducated, we cannot be ashamed of them won't understand that the elite only have faith in the privately educated, that the rest of us don't even stand a chance. We have made life a privatized institution. Only the privileged can afford to survive. Cut the crap, it is 2010. Chile has just been hit by an 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake, sending a tsunami to Hawaii, but you see, we were lucky because the tsunami barely hit Hawaii shores, but our children were already sinking anyway because the government's idea of a solution to an economic depression is furlough Fridays. Instead of cutting from a one trillion dollar war, <laughs> instead of cutting from a one trillion dollar war, we have taken school days from our offspring and we all know that the environment is dying because our legislation is failing at teaching our children to sprout through concrete. Enough with the quick fix band-aids and budget cuts, it is time to fill classrooms, not empty them. Unloading our brown bodies overseas to fight terrorism will not lighten this island enough to keep it afloat. It is 2010. The point it is 2010. It is time for a solution. Time to stop counting backwards to Haiti, Chile, Indonesia. Do not let the rhetoric fool you. There is nothing natural about the way we have destroyed our planet. Chile It's just 9-11 from a different angle. We are all our own worst enemies. Terrorists rest as patriots. Look around you. The death toll is rising with the sea level. We are all still counting sinking bodies. It is time to decide who is going to be privileged enough to survive next time. Is there anyone out there? It's getting hotter and hotter to breathe.